it's March 1st and I've gathered up my seeds for 2022 let me show you what I got this first group of seeds are from the local Dollar Tree they're all American seed and I got a pack of dwarf blue curled kale white Lisbon bunching onions French breakfast radish that's a favorite here red cord Chantonay carrots I've never had any luck growing carrots but I'm going to keep trying California wonder peppers Grand Bell mix peppers Marketmore cucumbers sugar baby watermelon jack-o-lantern pumpkins two packages of early golden bantam hybrid sweet corn a package of Italian basil and two packages of oregano seeds. I plan to pull up all of the oregano in my herb garden. It has absolutely no aroma to it and it's useless in cooking so we're going to start over and see how we do. This next group of seeds is also from American Seed but I purchased these from our local Walmart. Early Wonder Tall Top Beets Chili Poblano peppers, two packs of Cuban Allen peppers. It says pimento. I wonder if that's the kind of pepper you use to stuff olives. Uh, purple tomatillos, two packages of Stowell's Evergreen corn, a package of oregano, and then my wife picked up two kinds of dahlias and Mexican sunflower. And I have one more pack of sunflower seeds, also Mexican sunflowers. These came from a local nursery. This is uh, Lake Valley seed. I didn't order any seeds from the Burpee catalog because the local Walmart and Home Depot have really big displays of Burpee seeds and the seeds are less expensive at the store than they are out of the catalog. Now the packages contain less than the catalogs do, but uh, for us we don't have that big of a garden so the smaller packages work well. I got a pack of Parade Bunching Onions, Flavor King Bunching Onions, Greek Pepperoncini, a Bodacious Hybrid Tomato, Early Sweet Sugar Pie Pumpkin, and again my wife with the sunflowers. We've got Evening Sun Mixed Colors and Mammoth and also mixed flowers for hummingbirds and butterflies. We ordered seeds from Southern Exposure Seed Exchange. I actually had to call to get them to send me a catalog. So uh, maybe Travis at Lazy Dog Farm is right. They're actually cutting back on the catalogs that they send out. But they did send one. It was here a couple of days after I contacted them. And I placed an order. I got Vates Collards. Premium Late Flat Dutch Cabbage. I actually wanted the early Dutch Cabbage, but they were sold out. A new to us variety of loose leaf lettuce. This is called Drunken Woman. Uh, daikon Radishes. That's a first for us. A couple of new varieties of tomatoes. Reverend Morrow's Long Keeper. It's supposed to be a storage tomato. You can pick right before the uh, first frost and it should store for a couple of months. Uh, Mountaineer Delight. And then I got some orange okra. Jing orange okra. And a package of catnip. We planted this around our cabbages last year and it seemed to attract a lot of wasps and we did not have any problem with cabbage caterpillars so we're going to try that again this year and the last thing is a package of southern peas these are called iron and clay and the last order we placed was with Baker Creek the season wouldn't be complete without some seeds from Baker Creek see what we've got. Uh, this is a Zabruni shallot. 
onions, Chinese multicolored spinach. It's actually an amaranth. Ruby queen beets. These are supposed to do well in depleted soil. Elephant dill. Uh, be it alpha cucumber, something I've never tried before. Thai lavender frog eggs, something my wife was interested in. Japanese flowering kale. And then we got uh, a couple of seed packs for gifts. Uh, white bitter melon from Okinawa. These seeds were very expensive, but the person who gets them is going to be very excited. And then edamame. This is uh, Tankuro soybeans for someone who wanted to try growing soybeans this year. Some calendula. And then uh, Baker Creek likes to send out free seeds. That's always exciting. We got Japanese wasabi radish and datil peppers, which uh, looks fascinating. It looks to be a hot pepper. It says blazing hot. Blunt little three and a half inch fruits ripen into brilliant yellow orange, sorry, brilliant orange yellow. Vicious heat, complex fruity flavor. So I'm thinking habanero, but bigger. That's all the seeds for this year. That's a lot of seeds, more than we normally would buy. But there's a good chance we're going to have an extra garden place this year. And I'll get into that in a future video. But for now, just know that we have more seeds than we need. So if World War III breaks out, we'll at least have seeds for the garden. Now we need to pick the seed for our single seed challenge. I've given this a lot of thought. And this year I want to try something I've never grown before. And I actually had a hard time finding seeds for. Hmm. There's the one I was looking for. This is a Greek pepperoncini. Yeah, this is like the kinds of pickled peppers you get in a Greek salad with feta cheese. Or you might also get the Italian version of this with a pizza from somebody like Papa John's that used to give them out. I don't know if they still do. So, let's get the single seed challenge up and running for 2022. I think I see the one I want. I'm going to try this one. I have a four inch pot of Garden Collections potting soil from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to make a little hole here in the center. I'm going to move this lump out of the way. This is not seed starting mix, but it'll be okay. Drop in the seed, tamp it down, give it some water, and put it in a warm place. It says the seedling should emerge in 10 to 21 days, so that could be three weeks. A long time to wait to find out if I'm going to have to start over. But that's all part of the single seed challenge. The idea is to learn as much as you can about a plant from a single seed. I'll do an update video after the seed germinates. And I'm going to end this video with a recap of my 2021 single seed challenge. If you followed along, you may have wondered what happened to my apple trees. Let me show you how they did. Well, here's what's left of them. One on the left and the one on the right. They did really well for about four or five months. And then they both got powdery mildew. 
I tried a couple of home remedies to see if I could clear it up, but I never did, and eventually I just let them die off. I figured the last thing the world needs is more apple trees that are prone to disease. But I don't consider it a failure. After all, the whole point of the single seed challenge is to learn about a plant, and I learned a lot about apples. One of the things I learned is the reason none of my apple seeds ever germinate is they have to be stratified. And that means they need to be below freezing for a certain number of days. So right now I have some apple seeds in the freezer and I'm gonna take them out and get them germinating and I'll let you know if I have success germinating apple seeds that way. I also saw a video from someone in the Philippines who soaked their apple seeds for four hours then peeled the outside husk off the seeds and got some to germinate that way. So it looks like it is possible to germinate apple seeds without freezing them. But I don't think you'll ever get any apples off an apple tree if you don't live in a climate that gets cold enough to freeze. So yeah, it was a good experiment. I learned a lot and now I'm not afraid to try growing apple trees again. And I also spoke with someone who's had success germinating apple seeds and they said, yeah, you should have kept them alive because once they got a little bit bigger, you could have grafted uh, quality scion wood onto your rootstocks and have any apple you want. So uh, I might try that again this year. I'll let you know how it goes. Until then, hey, spring's right around the corner. It's time to get all of those plants started. Peppers, tomatoes, and you can plant stuff outside in Zone 7A all your cold weather crops. So get out there and get busy.